Whoops. Filled up there. I think we're still in business. Light's still green. Green still go. Uh, where do we leave off? Oh, uh, I was saying that a lot of people and things and businesses and families and names are just going to die off and disappear. Um, and then from there, I think what's going to happen is that, you know, it's just it leaves more power to be delegated to the corporation state, to the large irresponsible model, to the model where you can never get an answer from anyone because no one's responsible. Um, and then everyone who can afford to be above the law just is. And everyone who can't afford is just kept at the bottom. Like I said, the reason why the barriers to entry get higher, the reason why it's so hostile, again, who needs competition? Who needs other people to actually have families you know it's just going to be it's going to be somewhere between like brave new world and idiocracy in 1984 and you know to the degrees maybe we're like you know halfway there you almost begin to look at the wider system and you go oh wow like feudalism would probably actually be more humane because at least oh and people will probably think i'm being hyperbolic i i do think feudalism is more humane uh, in a lot of ways than our American system. And I'll get into it here. It's feudalism. You don't have to worry about paying for rent, right? You have a place to stay and you got to get up and work. But also, I want to say in the feudal system, they had something like over a hundred... More time off. days each year. That's days off. Yeah. If you're poor, if you're broke anyway, what's it matter if you're working? You know, and if you're, and if you're basically a life of indentured servitude, you know, what's it matter if you have to work? Like, you're... You're the one whose time in life is completely devalued. So uh, if you actually have some time off to maybe enjoy yourself, right? I'm getting into this health, the difference between having and being, because I think a lot of people are going to, like the corporation state is increasingly robbing Americans of their ability to be, right? Not, you know, the have plays into it, but they were already conditioned to be havers, right? Like my criticism earlier of, um, new money and old money. It's like, here's the issue with new money. You know, they're different physiologies. So the guy who comes from the bottom, the guy who has $30, it's basically same guy who has 300, same guy who has 3000, same guy who has 30,000. By the time, if this guy makes 3 millions, uh, 3 million, he, he, he kind of, he's still running on the same mode as when he was on his last 30 bucks. He's still running the clock. He's still running a marathon, right? He's still, generally, this is how our businessmen are, especially when they come from the bottom because they know it can disappear. They know what it's like to be hungry, right? It's like, but that's what it does. And a lot of these people, they die, right? Because they're just running that marathon and it takes a toll physio physiologically. So imagine being able to have everything, but then you can't handle that and you lose everything, right? So what's the point of having if you're not actually healthy, right? What's the point of, or, and then the other side of it, what's the point of being or having in a system that doesn't appreciate you, doesn't pay you enough to live, and also doesn't give you hardly any time off. And then if you do have time off, you don't really have any avenues or venues or community or much to do with it, right? Like you are just disconnected and disjointed from the world. You had to observe, you had to do other things, you had to maybe... Um, right, okay, so saying, probably, yeah, in the feudal system, yeah, you had to go to church, you had to do these other things, a lot more mandatory stuff. So they let go with the authoritarian aspects of our civilization, right? We don't burn witches as much anymore. Like we just, we don't have to. They just get torn down on social media. Their reputations get slandered, right? Uh, no one, you know, if anyone gets too popular, you can always character assassinate them, right? This is how our kind of um, de, de facto social credit system works. And it kind of always has as human beings. Like we have reputations and names and our word matters for a reason. You want to be per someone whose word matters, right? That's someone who is right? Because they're consistent, they're authentic. And that authentic is like, oh, I have to be me because what everyone learns, right? Like back to the lessons on image and acting is that we're constantly having to do things we don't want to do, display things we don't want to display, deal with emotions we don't want to, like everything is inconvenient to both humans and the human system. And so, you know, we're kind of sieved through it. We're kind of like, you know, the ones being pushed or pulled through it. So it's a lot to adapt to. And this is my what I'm pointing out with how our system works is that it's become increasingly hard and sophisticated. So increasingly hostile to this country of average people who have been sold fantasies and lies. Other things you probably didn't want to do, but regardless, the feudal system have still had more holidays, holidays. Holy, holy day, right? like holidays where it comes from. So 
it's you know it really actually was more humane and i've pointed this out before i think like even in right you had the protection of your lord you had a place to stay you know you got to eat your food that you grew um and like um, right you had a connection to the land to the people um and it wasn't deferred through money like uh um, Brave New World is more humane because all the intelligent oh, yeah. people who can't fit themselves into this insane, manufactured, prefabricated system of like a uh, human abyss. It's a human abyss because all the emotions are fake and everything is false, right? Nothing's real, um, including the people. Okay. It's not a moral judgment on them. I'm not saying they should be some other way. Pointing out how the system forces them into dissimulation and inauthenticity. To, the, to begin with, how how our corporate model has been advertising to them from the beginning, how they've been snipped at and snapped at and judged and attacked and hurt by their fellows, their families, you name it, any number of people in this place. Because a lot of people's, a lot of Americans' worst experiences in our system is in our system, our schools, uh, the government, the state, uh, like whether that's an orphanage or a uh, family services, you know, all the things uh, a lot of the worst things that Americans ever deal with is the state and the system itself, right? And then the pretense of it is that these the, the people like middle management who, you know, wishes they were the owners, you know, this is what the argument's all about. Who have been propagandized and bred to be this way. But, um, you know, it's more humane than our present society even because they just, they don't kill them. They don't, they don't, they don't do anything. Hard. In Brave New World. They don't kill the detractors. They don't do what, like, they don't say you have to be this way like they do in 1984. Brave New World is more humane because it's like, hey, you don't belong. All right, we got some islands you can go live on. We got some places you can go, right? It's almost like reservations for the sane people. Um, I'm beginning to think America might need something like that. Um, or, you know, because, well. Christian people, like, to burn witches, you'd actually have to care, right? So they just send them to an island. Like, hey, you don't belong here. You don't fit in. Sure, go live on this island, right? And that would be more humane than how our present society is because we don't even have enough. The reason why people wonder why a lot of crime is let go is because the truth is we actually don't have systems to accommodate this many criminals. World's biggest prison system? We don't even have enough to accommodate how many criminals we have here, like blue collar and white collar and just you know, street elements, right? Like we don't even have world's biggest prison system and we don't have enough to accommodate our own population, right? Like things would look like that image, the image you would need, like we would basically need to set up camps, right? And that's never a good image in the supposedly humanitarian West. But if we wanted, if America actually wanted to prosecute these, whether it's the mobs, the mob insurrection, um, or, you know, there's just not enough room a nation of you know some, some you know the ones who can afford to get off get off and everyone mm -hmm. else is just kind of run through it and everyone's going well, why aren't they doing anything because uh i guess like the old um zombie story goes right that the when dawn of the dead full, the dead shall walk the earth so there you have it accommodate this man well i said when heaven is full the dead shall walk the earth but from the movie, it's when hell is full, the dead shall walk the earth. So, you know what I mean is if people's avenues and both the fantasy and the reality are cut off for them, what are they left with? They're left with being. There's this old concept of soul, just to be, to be present. You know, I think our system has long encouraged having in an unrealistic way. And it sold this fantasy to everyone from the lowest class to the highest class. The highest class are already born into it. To them, you know, most of it's a joke. It's not a big deal to, you know, for a long time, the corporation state has sold irresponsibly and they've sold irresponsibility itself as part and parcel to products and ideals and, you know, uh, promotes a certain sort of like myopic selfishness. You know, and this is when I say things like, you know, good fences make good neighbors and terms like F U money, right? Everyone wants their little piece of the pie and then they want to check out. And it's like, well, why does, why does anyone even need you? Because this is a shaping process. And if you're not actually giving back about as much as you're taking out, then what do you, you know, what are you doing here? But then you go, that's the ideal. And the model doesn't actually run that way. So people are left with the reality and the reality is stress for a lot of people who constitute the vast majority of this country. 
And this is where I'm going to get into health and well-being. So I wrote a few notes here. And the main notion of health and well-being, you know, this is not a new concept, but again, you can see it in people, you can feel it in them, you can hear it in their language, they're alive, they're present, they're, they'll see you, they'll hear you, they'll listen. And, you know, and when you meet people, a lot of times you'll see if they're so used to, if they're not used to getting attention, they're often shy, they're often, they often don't want to be seen. They're like, oh shit, someone sees me, someone might see me, I don't, I'm not used to that, right? So you can see in at least over here in America and how our people are, you can see how there is this very real alienation. You can see how our image and acting requires a certain lockstep, you know, motion towards preserving group harmony. And then that's what kind of, if you look to our marketing and our media, you see that's what everyone's arguing about, whether it's left, right, up, down, doesn't matter politics be what they may it's people arguing over sentiments how should we think how should we feel the words we can or can't use right that's that's a funny notion right what do you have to say about that big brother oh nothing okay well we'll keep going um you know again like i said maybe that's a good thing about there being no one held responsible it leaves the individual american to find the answers for themselves and when i'm telling you that i think the biggest problem with our people with our cultural conditioning is that people have been raised to be helpless and hapless and believe in fantasies because it makes the 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 strongest power stronger and the weakest powers weaker you know the individual the family um so it's what you are not what you have right because you know your body is uh, the grounds upon which everything else is built or everything else comes from, right? If the ledger reads zero, you and so long as you are healthy, right? It's something you are, it's not something that you have, right? Because even something like having health, you can lose health in a car accident, ask motorcyclists, ask anyone who gets sick or diagnosed, right? You never know. Um, so time and life and health are infinitely precious. And I'm not going to get into what I did the other day about how we're taught to value paper money yet waste time in life, right, which is health. Um, You know, um, I'm going to keep going here. So I wrote that I think Americans are conditioned to think and feel and behave to think they are what they have. Right. That's that covered that. So this is, you know, I guess through all this, I do want to say that there is an importance of having standards regardless about having and about being because the standards indicate how one should behave to maintain oneself and what one has and what one is right so all of education conduces towards these effects the realistic question to ask is how much is any individual capable of taking in that information and then assimilating it and then working with it in an ever-changing, complicated world because, again, I think Americans are lied to. People are taught that this is simple, that this is easy, that making money, starting a business, having a family, it's all easy. It's like, no, this is these are the challenges of life and your, your limitations, because everyone has limitations. Every single person, the most beautiful, strongest person in the world, right, you know, they learn to, like, they don't think about themselves as limited and see, these, this is where I think of the differences, right? You can see it in people. Some people, it's like, Again, they're a victim, they feel sorry for themselves and they feel sorry for other people and it's easy to hide oneself in such sentiments, right? This is why pity is so destructive. This is why vic- victimhood is so destructive because you can get, you know, you can get the illusion of fixing the problem by garnering sympathy and, you know, certain things like that, but it actually gets you nowhere in the world. Uh, pity has no value on the market um, other than certain product corporate designed products that actually are doing very poorly on the market like it's been shown because you know i'm not here to argue for or against any of this stuff i don't really care i'm just pointing out like a lot of this dei stuff a lot of this um, corporation state institutionalized thought products and services that are bought and sold on the american corporation state market for it's it's like you know people want to argue and fight with it but go like that's that's what the corporation state is buying and selling at the moment don't worry it's gonna fail just like do you remember head start yeah no one else does do you remember no child left behind yeah no one else does like this will go down the memory hole too uh as you know because as a teacher i know in america once said it's sort of like rearranging deck chairs on the titanic and really it's a few people figuring out how to make money off of the decay, off of the decomposition, right? Because as the barriers and standards fall, there's the importance of standards, the people will try to meet your standards. And if they don't, well, that, see, like, 
there's all this delusion about rationalizing and making arguments for and against things. But the reality is by having standards of values, you set a bar for appearance, behavior, and communication. And then people come up and they will try to meet that bar, especially if you give them a decent incentive. It doesn't even have to be a lie. It can just be as simple as self-respect and dignity, treating them like a human being. You know, yes, you know, the, the, the model might teaches without saying consideration is weakness. If you have to stop and think about other people, right? How can you make money off them? How can you squeeze more money out of them? How can you get away with, you know, cheating, even if, even if it's little, even if it's a white lie, how can you get away with, right? So I get it that on one hand, the system teaches people to cheat and lie at every juncture, especially when you see that, like the owner set the model. So it's like, it's hard to, you know, argue that anyone does it. Like, okay, people want to scam, people want to lie, people want to cheat on their taxes. Okay, it's hard to say that's not what they were taught. Like, these are the master's tools and they taught everyone well, right? But it makes for a hateful society. So uh, the unhealthiness, the pathology is rampant. Anyway, um, going on. So I said, America is creating entire classes of people who can't keep up with our society, our technology, they can't compete socially, emotionally, physically, mentally. Like a lot of men wind up in prison because those are the exact men that our society rejected. They said, we don't want your violence. We don't want, like you're too emotional, you're too volatile, you're too reactive. You can't actually maintain a day-to-day -day life, a disciplined life over a long period of time. Or if you have any discipline, it's only towards criminal endeavors. Therefore, you know, one percenter, they lock them up. They, you know, that's been the system at war with you know, the people that rise, you know, the people that are just exist within it or around it or in a side of it, you know, because I'm not going to say that one creates the other, like people and things just exist. If you observe a plant, it will grow to its natural height, right? What's unnatural, as a friend of mine says, is that we design these things and we shape these things or what's more unnatural than the natural growth of such things is that, that people meddle, right? That's what, and that we argue. And when I said unnatural, I mean like, in another video I talked about, a friend said, you know, you have two dogs on a leash and what's unnatural, what's natural is for the dogs to sniff each other. What's unnatural is for the humans to get uptight and pull them away, you know, and to not let that process play out because it's completely, again, normal, instinctive, healthy. So you see that a lot of the American system reacts what is healthy or strong because a lot of criminals, they're otherwise, you know, kind of healthy physiologies, healthy people, like healthy bodily. It's just they don't have the minds or capabilities or emotional content or whatever you'd say or sensational content to exist in a system that says we only accept a very narrow range of activity when even that's kind of like you know um yeah it's kind of mincemeat you know but um so the school system is worse than ever uh it's failing to keep up or teach anyone worse than ever and you know to this day, you know, this is what I'm talking about. Like the system wasn't designed to create new money or to create more old money. It was to create is designed to create a consumer class. The middle class worked well until they largely, a lot of them again, failed, bought out, sold out, made bad decisions themselves. They bought too much of the fantasy. And now we have a lot of our money classes. Now I think they're going to increasingly die out because yes, they were raised more affluently. Yes, maybe upper middle class, but that's that's still like in terms of the what people actually do have in america that's the upper middle class is practically broke compared to what money really looks like in america right like the the flash in the pan day uh day and night like the millionaire who comes and goes that's been a part of america for generations now and if people don't realize that that's by design that the house takes all that it's always been this way that Babylon is not designed necessarily for the health of individuals or families, right? That, you know, that if people can't learn to adapt and work within how these things are, have been, and will change, then they're just going to increasingly die out. And through all that is going to be sickness. So again, you know, how do you maintain healthiness? How do you maintain your being in a world that's constantly in a world of people that are constantly pushing to you, selling to you, right? There's like drug pushers at every corner, basically, right? You can think of it like that. 
That's almost what our culture. So you have to be able to resist what the culture sells, the unhealthy food, the drugs, the this, the that, right? All the things that just take so much of your time and energy, the media, the media that wastes your time and energy, the media that lies to you. You know, so first off, you have to be strong enough to resist what is sick. And then you have to be healthy enough to continue to assert yourself in disciplined manner day after day, where so many people are will attack you, will drag you down, will be upset, will not be happy that you're not playing with their game, that you're not, you know, uh, enjoining them with their pity and their sympathies and their concerns, you know, because yes, I'm talking about, it. I'm going to keep pointing this out. I, I will continue with my critiques on this channel, but that's not the same with, I will not indulge anyone's victim complex. I won't indulge people's bad attitudes, whether that's about the, uh, you know, uh, hatred between men and women, the enmity, enmity of the sexes, or whether that's hatred, you know, because the most funny thing about me, about our present life and our present culture, is there really does seem like a culture of hatred. But let me tell you the, speci the what makes this hard, the difference between the sophisticated hatred and the uh, more basic hatred is that, you know, basic hatred is old hatred, right? It's like, I hate you for everything about you. Just, there's really no discrimination, everything that you are. So that's race, class, nature, how you look, how you sound, how you talk. People just hated each other and they always do and they still do, right? So now it's like, okay, you can't hate people for their race. You can't hate them for their this. You can't hate them for their that. Like, and I'm not art, right? If anyone is jumping to the conclusion that like, that's what I'm arguing for here, right? Get out. Like, you don't belong here. Like, this is the kind of reactive low, like physiology I'm talking about where you've been conditioned to just jump onto things. So that's not what I'm talking about here. What I mean is, the most absurd thing about the hatred, how hateful our culture is, you can hate people, you can, you can't hate them for what they are, but you can hate them for everything they have. And every, because this is also part of the sickness, right? You can hate them for what they have, what they think, what they feel, just not what they are. So how does that make sense? When people identify with their thoughts and feelings, when all of animal physiology is identify is you know uh, uh, these processes of thoughts and feelings and interactions between individuals, environments, groups, pressures, selections, all these comp infinitely complex processes taking place. You know you see how insane it is to say hate for this but not for that. And and I hope the name of the game is increasingly clear to you guys uh, and gals, whoever may wander in here. Um, so I have some last thoughts here about, you know, as you guys try to survive in Babylon here, as I try to make my way through it as well, you know, that, right, the old new money, there's a reason why a lot of it doesn't last. There's a reason why it's wiped out. It's reclaimed. It's lost. It's because we're different people who come from different places, completely different cultures. So the people who sell the sophisticated hatred, you know, channel, you know, and I'm not saying they're you know, they're just, they're doing what they do. They're doing what people have always done. But the people who sell these things, the people who buy these things, like they can't even, part of their critique is conveniently ignoring the fact that these are class divides, right? Because it's sublimated into the fact that they also have to play the corporate state game because, you know, you see at the extreme end, people get violent and on the other end, they get political. Now, both are the same thing as just one is sublimated into like, usually it's more like nonviolent action versus something like protest, which is largely symbolic. Like the average American, they protest because they see it on TV. And, but like, it doesn't, it's disconnected. You know, it was Emerson who wrote, Your the Americans love afar is hatred at home or is poison at home, right? And he was referencing like, Americans would sit there talking about, you know, before the Civil War, mind you, Americans would be like, oh yeah, it's terrible that they have slavery in Barbados. And like, never mind that they're slave owners or they live in a country that where the owners own slaves. Because remember, owning slaves is just an upper class thing. The average American didn't own slaves. The average American was always poor. The average American was often a slave themselves or an indentured servant, or they were kidnapped, or you know they wound up here on dire straits where they weren't welcome in Europe or they were being burned as witches in Europe. In fact, there's a great story about George Washington's grandpa on a boat of Europeans uh, you know, escaping their religious persecution on the way to America here. George Washington's father, was the only American on that boat who went to file a complaint with the magistrate because on that voyage over, all those crazy Europeans went, this woman, she's a witch, murdered her. Captain agreed, murdered her, threw her overboard. Everyone got to America, went their separate ways. And only George Washington's grandfather went to the magistrate to be like, hey, they just killed this woman. Someone should probably know, you know. So I want people to understand that 
you know, Babylon, Europeans, the way the, 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 the hate and the love and the sublimation all works. It's always kind of been like this. These games have always been sophisticated and complex. The how power is wielded in increasingly symbolic and sophisticated ways is that much more crucial to understanding how people and market work. So I'm going to continue talking about these things. And while, you know, I'm talking about health or, or market because I'm bringing like, why does something like health matter? Because again, if you don't have that, it's hard to do anything or everything else. And what you can see with a lot of Americans, especially the people who complain and protest and all this other stuff is that they're just not healthy people. They're not mentally well. They don't come from, you know, healthy families often. Right. And you can hear and see this, the mental illness problems in our culture and absent like guidance and non-commercial guides to life. Because, again, remember, even all the protest stuff is designated within the corporation state. It happens on college. It's protected, protected speech on college campuses. You know, they allow it. They encourage it. Right. So that it ever happens. And the people, you know, that anyone makes a big deal about it, it's like, well, you're the one. Everyone lets it happen. Everyone you know, contributes in their own ways. This is what I'm trying to talk about with the system. It's like if anyone wants to complain about prisoner conditions, no, then I think they should first ask themselves, well, how do you contribute? Because what I notice about Americans is everyone contributes here. How else did this country become like this? It wasn't like George Carlin once said. It wasn't those, the this is and them's the they's. It was just the people here and they're all born into it. And by buying the fantasies and by following our own desires, you know, we then support and buy into it. And that's exactly what civilization has long been is this kind of semi-hostile, semi-buy-in force process because what happens if you don't? Well, someone will be there to force you, force you from the land, force you out the way, force you into some role you don't wanna do, some role you do wanna do, but you want more money for, right? There's all sorts of ways in which we are bossy, pushy uh, uh, tyrants and slaves and it's in, America as a country and as a mishmash of European absolutely is the nature of this zeitgeist. And you see how powerful it's been. Europe has almost been irrelevant in terms of technology and powerful culture. I get it. It's like, it's beautiful and it's, it's our history and it's where America comes from and where Americans come from. Right. But at the same time, like the way our cultures have all changed and shifted over time, including the fact that America is Europe's European uh, military backbone, you know, you see what kind of precarious ledges, um, excuse me, it's left all these countries and our modern markets and our people on. So as things get worse, we will see more health decline. We're gonna see population decline. But regardless, the focus of this channel is health and happiness, is a focus on being and enjoying life regardless because you know times have always been tough to not laugh because you know to not laugh out of pity for others to not laugh out of consideration for others like it's robbing it's further robbing ourselves almost like if americans already don't have anything left or they don't have much left and there's not much prospect for the future then if you take away laughter then what are they left with right because i think our comedy has always been one of our best arts and has long been humanity's highest art and best cope because it's how we deal with what's hard. It's how we get through hard times. It's facing up to ourselves and others, whether that's laughing over oneself and one's tiny ego to get over oneself or to get over others as well, right? To move along, to get on with the show because there's no stopping it here. The productions will continue. People still need to live. People still need to make money. None of this stops. None of this stops because someone protests. None of this stops because someone has a war. None of this stops because if anything, it just seems to speed up the process, right? Um, so aside the fact that, you know, mankind has long been trying to put each other in a straitjacket and the world as such, aside that tendency, you know, until then, you know, man is still potential and possibility. You know, the world is as free as you want to allow yourself to live in it in terms of your thoughts, your feelings, what you pursue and how you pursue it, assuming you have the ability to, right? Like I've been talking about physiology, who we are, where we come from, why we are the way we are. You know, if our scientists, if our psychologists, if our physiologists, if anyone cared more about this, they would measure things like health and well-being. We would actually sell health and well-being over, I'm not going to say supplements and vitamins. That's, we would sell health and well-being, not treat, right? Because you can sell the unhealthy stuff. 
You can have your cake and eat it too. And then you can sell the diabetes medication too and the insulin, right? Like you can get to, you just, no matter what, no matter how much decomposition sets in, you profit off of it, right? So what about profiting off health? And the biggest boon being that when people suffer less, like they generally inflict themselves less. Like embitterment is real, but the cure for embitterment, which is bitter medicine, which is bitter humor, right? Good medicine, uh, laughter, um, does help people get over themselves. So I'm going to continue to explore these topics and these ideas along these lines. Uh, next up on my video series here, because this video wound up way longer than I intended, but next up is literary analysis, especially as it relates to our just our lives, our lives as such, not the theoretical life, not the ideal life, not the life people are protesting, not the life we wish it was, not the life of what if, but the lives that is, the system that is, people as they are, because it's actually kind of cruel to insist people be anything but what they are, right? It would be mean if, you know, if, if someone was in a wheelchair and then you whipped them and said, stand up, right? That's kind of mean, isn't it? I think so. I think it's absurd. Like the people expect the same things from different people is tyranny, obviously. And then if people go along with it, it shows you that it's slavery because they believe in their own dehumanization, being told that they can be something that they're not, right? I'll keep talking about the differences between having and being. And nobody can buy what they're born as. No one does buy what they're born as. They are born as they're born. And then we as artists and individuals and otherwise, we create ourselves and the world creates us as well. And then we kind of see what we have to say about it. And there's no stopping what's to be seen. And formerly, we as a people, I think, did a better job of sublimating our issues into our art. But now that art has been largely sold out. It just comes out everywhere. You could think of it like the ship of fools, no matter what uh, leak you plug, right? This is why talking about the problem is fruitless because no matter what plug, uh, plug you leak, you just see there's another one, right? So everyone's playing this game and then the, the, the speech and the rhetoric they employ further tells you what their angle is. And generally it's their own survival and their own thing, right? Their own well-being. But I'm here for Americans who want to um, not just survive, but thrive to support what they love in the world, to create more beauty in the world, to, uh, you know, to find happiness and enjoyment in being, in living, regardless of what happens. So anyway, thanks for your time. Thanks for your attention. I appreciate it. Hope your day is well. If, uh, if you're going through it, you know, um, I, I hope you learned something. I really do, because um, it would be horrible for everyone to deal with this and deal with their problems and then learn nothing from it or gain nothing thereby. But it doesn't seem like that's education really matters, does it? Anyway, I'm getting into another topic itself. It's all kind of circular, uh, circular with a few um, changing dynamics and dramas. But regardless, people are here as they have been and, uh, you know, they're not going anywhere. So um, for those of you who want to work together and build something, create something, you need help with your appearance, your behavior, communication. Because remember, appearance is physical rhetoric. If everyone is so easily wowed with how with someone who speaks well and who can communicate their ideas well, then understand that how you look is first up in the process. You can be communicating what you want to communicate before you say a word. So there is something to this. And then from there, your behavior and communicate, uh, your behavior speaks louder than your communication, but it all works together to create a coherent product because here in America, we are the products and we provide the products and the services. So anyway, thanks again for your time. I'm Zachariah Morkowski with um, Sharper Pen Image Consulting. I appreciate it and uh, have a good day.